Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Uh, it's the final video in this tutorial on the tear notes from the um, Dust Storm box set, Shield Above. And um, just to show you what I've been doing off camera, I have been doing the um, basically the finishing touches on the main part of the, of the Tyranid here. So what I've done is basically uh, gone over the blue with a lighter shade of uh, Calador's Sky, which was just lightened with um, Vallejo Pale Sand in equal you know, proportions and just laid it on with the glaze medium and then one, I've done about three coats of that and when one that was finished I've done exactly the same with Temple Guard Blue for the final highlight on the blue and again that was applied with the uh, glazes in about three or four coats and then uh, finished all of the um, skin tone as you can see on here and over there hooves I, I, I rebase coated them in rackart flesh and then I went over them with a glaze of um, calthan brown okay and I also applied that to the claws as well because I don't want the claws to be black I want them to be um, a brownish bony color so I think having more than three colours on the model itself is going to ruin it. So that's the progress I've made on there. And today I'm going to finish off with painting the scything claws. So um, I'll just give you an idea what I've been doing already. This is um, what I was doing earlier before I made a mistake and had to restart the video. So what I've done is basically... Um, painted the skin areas in the purple, armor piece in the blue, and then this is was based, based coat and rack out flesh, just as it was on the Tyranid, and then over it with the glaze of the actual um, calcium brown. And now, now that's dried on this here, I'm gonna demonstrate it on this other piece, but then we're gonna start layering some very thin layers of the um, lich purple with a glazed. Okay, and that's gonna give us a gradual buildup of colour marrying up to the brown so it looks like it's blending in yeah so um, let's crack on so I'm going to start off with just putting some purple on over the flesh part of the hand and remember we just keep it all even And avoid any pooling okay so if you have any pooling just clean your brush off and let the bristles just soak it up <clears throat> excuse me blimey I'm not too worried about where I've overpainted because uh, this is just for um, demo purposes So yeah, we leave that as it is there. Oh, just a bit. Suck up that pool in. It's a blob of paint where I don't really want it. Right then. Okay. Next stage is I've got some calcium brown pre-mixed over here with just water. Okay, and we're just gonna go with the side of the brush and one movement. Well, several now. But from here to there, just bring it round. Paint that bit at the top and straight down again. There you go. 
So it's gone darker to the tip. Just going to show you on these main parts here, the actual small little finger claws not attached to the fingertips. I'll paint those um, separately. Okay. Fortunately, I've got, to, I've got to wait to let that dry. But it's drying very quickly anyway. So while we're here, while well, that one's drying, this is pretty good because I can do two arms at once today. With the purple glaze, again I've got about two drops of the purple paint and three drops of glaze in there. And basically why I'm doing this, with this purple actually coming into the blade, is because I don't think their weapons are sort of like are detachable when they're like this. I think this is part of them. So I just want the um, I just want it looking like uh, the actual colour of the skin is actually on the blade. So I've got a nice little transition there. So I'm not going to do any more to that. And it's the same with the purple. I just want to have a little bit of that just clean up off near the top. Um, and again, just clean that bit off the top. Just a little bit too much on there. There we go. So, first coat on this one. All I'm doing is just feathering out that hard line and take a lot of pulling. So that's the first layer on that side. Still taking some time to dry. Not sure about you guys, but if you're watching that new series on Netflix, that like Marco Polo, um, during it's during the time of. Um, by Khan, Genghis Khan's son's rule over his, over the uh, Mongol Empire. 
very good history and um, and if you like your, your, your claret there's plenty of that in it as well yeah so there's some really good um, really good series some good action in it too but it's telling the story of Marco Polo when he was a young man when he first actually went over the seas and from what they're depicting he actually stowed away on his father's ship and basically they had no choice but to have him there because he, they didn't want him there because they said it wasn't a place for a boy but anyway watch it on Netflix if you have Netflix it's very good though right, let's have a look now I'm just gonna, while I'm waiting for this purple to dry, I'm just going to go over with the blue again. It needs a second coat now anyway. And I'm going to do that there. Up to the edge of the cuff. Cleaning my brush off and making a highlight like that. There you go. One highlight. And I just want a little bit more near the top there. And another one coming over here. But at the same time, cocking it up. This is the inner side, so it's going to be very little. work it out when it's stuck onto the beast. I'll work up those highlights later. For some reason this is not applying the way I want it to. It's going on very patchy. I'm going to have to let it dry at that stage. In the meantime we'll put another coat of purple on. Again, start from the back, but go about two thirds of the way up, okay? Because we want to create that transition. So I'm just pulling that back a bit now, I'm shifting it up and bring it back down. So you can start to see um, a bit of a pink purple tinge starting to form. It's, it's like the thing, the thing with this method, yeah, it does take time. It's time consuming, but once it gets going, you start building up those layers. It is then extremely rewarding. And again, just lightly Pulling it up like this is getting rid of that hard edge. So you can see the transition there now it's forming. You got the purple and then you got the bone left at the top here. And I'm gonna just keep repeating this process until I'm actually happy with the outcome. Like I said, the, down, the downside to the glaze from, from Vallejo is that it takes a little bit longer to actually um, dry. But once you get used to it, it works in your favor because you can actually um, 
play around with it a bit longer. Because there are a lot of painters out there, professional painters, who won't discuss their painting methods at all. It's like that uh, oil painter from the 1990s, Bob Ross. I don't think anybody these days will remember him, but he had his own TV show. He was showing you how to paint landscape portraits within half an hour, looking professional with simple techniques of blending with oil paint. And I got a lot of ideas from him, funny enough. But um, again, apparently, he didn't expose all of his secrets, only the ones that he, he wished to, to share amongst the public. But anyway, that is as far as I really want to take it, to be honest with you. So there we have it. You can see by where the hand is pink, it is leading into the bone there, and then the bone is just left as it is there. Now what I'm going to do here now, in between this colour and this colour here, this is going to be a darker brown. So, with this mix, that's all I'm doing. And then with the clean damp brush, tapping out that hard edge. like so. And again, once that's dry, we'll just add another, as you can see, we'll just add another coat after that's dried. As you can see there, it has uh, darkened the tip already. As this is only just water, there's no glaze in here, it's going to dry quickly. And again, Damp brush, take out that hard edge, job done. Okay, now that's it for now. Um, all I have to do is uh, assemble the modi, the modi, the model. Um, <clears throat> what I'll be doing off camera, I'll basically if we finish off this, this part of the arm, highlighting it and what have you, and sticking it together, and I'll try and add it on to the end of this video so there's not hundreds of videos attaching just to this one miniature. I am trying to work out how to um, basically uh, work a way of making these videos shorter, but, but given all the information, But the thing is, I haven't got a pause function with this computer program or with this camera because it's just a it's just a webcam, nothing special. Okay. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this technique that I'm sharing. It's just definitely have to have patience in order to do it, but um, the actual outcome is worth the wait. So there you go, that's one of my scythe and talons completed. Most likely I'll get some rack out flesh and just do a edge highlight going across here at the highest point, just to show the edges off on the actual um, blades because you can you can see some sort of edge there so that will be highlighted on an edge highlight and uh, I'll just do that off camera because we all know how to do an edge highlight just get your paint and just take it with the S with the um, body of the brush and gently does it it's all about being gentle There you go. I'm not going to play with it anymore. So I'm going to bugger it up good and proper. Well, thanks for watching. And um, 
I'll show you the completed miniature at the end of this film. Thanks very much. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I'm back. Um, right, while I was off camera, I just basically um, assembled the arms and put this baby on the stand. Um, it's all finished now. I'm quite happy the way it's turned out. And there we have it. So I'll give you some close-ups now. There we go. Just... Hello. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Would you want me to kill? <laughs> oh, it's uh, great fun painting this fella. Uh, I've got five more to go. Four warriors and a prime. And uh, the prime model looks pretty cool. He's got sort of like a very um, pointy. He's got a 1980s shoulder pad thing going on. So, uh, yeah, looking really nice. I mean, one thing that I punch myself in the face at is when you put the spine in can you see that line that's got to be filled I can't paint anything on here until I've filled that so uh, I'll be uh, you know what I'm going to be doing um, also to finish off this video there you go, we'll keep it on camera there it's basically I've taken off camera we'll um, be looking at gene stealers here we go got these all primed ready for painting all eight of them so they're all these are all ready to go so I'm going to leave these overnight to fully cure favorite pose is that one there right uh, that's just evil it's brilliant got his arms up knee out the back and then you got those talons coming right at you look forward to painting this one and then over here just resting on top of my laptop uh, one two and three more and well halfway there and halfway not and then over here over there we got the rest the two other warriors there one thing I want to point out though about the broodlord is this detail on the back is shite it is crap um, I didn't realize I didn't see it before when I done the unboxing it, is, it sticks out like a sore thumb but it's all these like rib ridges on the back and they just look like a preschool Tonka toy and uh, I think Games Workshop actually sculpted this one up in a hurry or they didn't have time to fish the ship for the launch date and they just thought sod it go to production job done so what I done with the Carnifax what came with it you have three back carapaces so I cut the um, overhangs off each side and stuck them on the top and I think it looks a lot better personally. Um, green stuffed in there. Green stuffed there at the back. And so much is done on the top. So I'm going to fill that all the rest of that in. And then I'm going to blend it all in with the rest to make it look like part of, it, of its armour. Because I was really uh, disappointed on how the actual back bones and back of the ribs looked on the model. And I just thought... They could have done so much more with this. But yeah, there you go, there you have it. Um, arms will be painted separately, general nature of the model itself. I'll just take it from there. And I'll, um, I'll still paint it, have fun with it. That's the whole point of it. And um, I'm just going to crack on and do some more painting. And uh, I really um, love the comments so far that you guys have left on the previous videos. Um, I'm not going to be doing another tutorial now this side of Christmas, it will be in the new year. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone for who's watched Miniatures Among Us, uh, my new screen name and uh, our channel name. Um, still got Sussat, I'll change it, but uh, I'll get there. 
but I've had a lot of fun this past couple of weeks uh, doing these tutorials all week or so I'm just happy how things have turned out and the, like I said the comments I've had from you guys has been fantastic absolutely awesome I really appreciate it so I'd like to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year I hope to have a very non sober new year myself so uh, I hope to get a little bit pissed as they say but anyway thank you very much again and take it easy everyone Merry Christmas to you all